Hey, good weekend to you. Welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Jerry Anderson, and we begin today with the latest developments in the bribery and racketeering scandal rocking state government and even threatening to affect the outcome of the race for the White House here in the Buckeye State come November. State Senator Teresa Gavarone, my guest. Yes, it's the now former Speaker of the House, Larry Householder, who the Fed say orchestrated the whole $60 million dark money operation. But Ms. Gavron was over there. She was in the room, as they might say in Hamilton. She was over there in the House uh, when a bitter fight over the speakership saw Householder gain the powerful seat as Speaker by the narrowest of margins. And Senator, you voted against him. You voted for Speaker Ryan Smith. And, uh, and I'm wondering why. I mean, did you already have misgivings about Householder, the way he does state business, the cloud that hung over him when he was in the same position years before? What was your rationale? I, I certainly was aware he, he was speaker before, um, but I had worked with Ryan Smith uh, quite a bit. He was the current speaker and um, he's someone you could, you could talk to. He had um, high integrity and he listened and uh, I thought he was a very effective leader. Um, so uh, I voted for Ryan Smith, um, and so did the majority, actually, the majority of the Republicans voted uh, for Ryan Smith. It was very unusual circumstances, as you may remember. Um, Larry Householder was elected speaker um, when the Democrats came over. And well, he, he knew he didn't have the numbers on in his own caucus on his side of the aisle, That's and right. some say it was a political masterstroke. He went to the other side of the aisle and said, you know what, if you jump, we can do business. And he, you know, he courted labor. He courted some of those Democratic votes over there. Were you surprised, be honest with me, were you surprised when the feds announced those allegations against Householder and the four other people? Honestly, I was stunned. I mean, I was, uh, that completely caught me off guard. Really? See, I, I was yeah. not surprised by that because I had seen the way that whole bill turned in, and, and I thought that there's money. Don't get me wrong. I didn't see it was going to be $60 million. I didn't see it was going to be, oh my gosh, he even formed this generations now thing to do this. But I'm just told that's the way Larry did business. That, that somebody came to you and said, hey, this means a lot to the speaker. He wants your vote. And remember, he's a powerful guy and you won't have legislation going anywhere unless you play ball with the speaker. That's what I hear. Well, I um, I actually left the House immediately yep. after that speaker vote yep. and, and went to the Senate. So I never really worked under Larry Householder as speaker. But uh, when that piece of legislation, House Bill 6, came to the Senate, we took an independent look at it. As a matter of fact, I met with community leaders throughout my district uh, toward davis Vesey and um, and we made changes to yep. that bill in the Senate and uh, made that bill better. So I, I, I felt comfortable voting for that piece yeah. of legislation. Well, I'm going to talk about that, Bill. Uh, but right now, uh, you were, and I'm going to give you a play on this, you were among the first to call for the Speaker's resignation. I mean, you were out there earlier than some of our local members of the House delegation. And now, could you do that because you had cover, because you're over there in the Senate? Or would your call have been the same if you were still in the House? My call would have been exactly the same. Yeah. Honestly, um, government can't really operate effectively without the trust of the people. And when that trust has been violated, I, I think it was time for, for uh, Larry Householder to step down as speaker, okay. certainly. Okay, I gotta get you to House Bill 6 because the bill at the very heart of the scandal, again, mm -hmm. federal charges, big stuff, including racketeering, serious stuff. The bill lives on, but if the process was dirty, and, and it certainly seems it was, based on these allegations, allegations, even the governor has called for that bill to be repealed, although he does want it replaced. Mm -hmm. If the allegations are true, this thing happened, this legislation happened illegally, and something illegal shouldn't be in law, should it? Well, I, I can tell you this. Davis Bessie is in my district. Got it. And um, is extremely important, um, employs thousands of people, and um, generates millions of dollars in, in revenue. I mean, that support the schools, the libraries, emergency services. Um, so Davis Bessie is important on that level, but also the clean energy that Davis Bessie generates. Um, I believe it's 90% of Ohio's clean energy comes from nuclear power. Um, and I think a, a diverse energy portfolio 
benefits Ohioans. No, I get, um, I, I get all that. And, and, and the governor, I think, agrees with you, point yes. for point. But even he is saying because of the taint on this bill. I mean, it's, this is the bill that, that why they form generations now, why and at First Energy Solutions put all the money in, in householders' pocket. If they did, these are allegations. Everybody has their day in court, folks. I, I just think this needs to be revisited because it's sitting there. I understand what you're saying about you still support the policy. So does the governor. Um, what about this? You know, voters never got to weigh in, and there was an effort to do that. And a big part of the federal bust are the allegations that householder armed with that first energy money actively sought to keep the issue off the ballot. Let's face it, they knew it would lose big time if it went statewide to voters. Because a lot of the state, they don't feel what we feel about Davis Bessie up here in our neck of the woods. They're down there elsewhere. So really, if voters don't want it, and supposedly you all in Columbus work for us all out here, why shouldn't this issue be revisited in, in the wrongs righted? Well, I, I'm sure as things uh, are proposed and legislation comes out, it'll go through the process and uh, we'll certainly be taking a look at this again. Um, okay. I, I believe there's been legislation proposed that will go through the committee process and, and get voted on fresh. Yeah. But I really would have a hard time supporting anything that would repeal without a replacement. I got you. I understand yeah. where you're coming from. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to take a break here. And, but I, I, I think there may be a silver lining to this otherwise embarrassing and just maddening and it makes me mad. And I've talked with people. Are you mad? You should be mad. I, I, I talked with Haraz Ganbari. I said, you guys should be as mad as you know what, because you get splashed by all of this. Absolutely. I, I, I was absolutely shocked when, when this came out. And um, it, uh, it disrupts the trust. It yeah, violates yeah. the trust of the people. And, All right, let's uh, talk about some solutions because I hear and understand some stuff's floating around out there. Uh, she is State Senator Teresa Gavarone, my guest on Leading Edge. We'll be right back right after this.